Hi YouTube friends, this is Amy aka Lavender. I just wanted to go over one of the scriptures that I never remember reading as a Jehovah's Witness and there's good reason that the Watchtower tries to hide this scripture because it doesn't go along with their doctrine and their explanation of it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but it's found in, and I have some notes here, guys, so if I'm looking up and down, that's why I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. The scripture is in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31, and it is talking about the rich man and Lazarus. So the scripture basically says, I'm just going to read it real quick. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, you remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, If even if someone rises from the dead. So that's a pretty important scripture. Um, and like I said, as a Jehovah's Witness, I never read that scripture, never heard of that scripture. And of course, I'm sure Watchtower tries to avoid that scripture all the time. So basically... It's, they have <laughs> the explanation for these few verses in a book, and I will uh, provide the link in the description of this video so you can check out, um, check out their description on their website. But it basically compares the rich man with the Pharisees and Lazarus with the common people who were spiritually starved. So it says that the Pharisees have long been exalted by men and that this was a time of change. The tables were about to be turned. The highly exalted ones who are rich in worldly goods, political power, and religious influence are to be brought down. The common people who recognize their spiritual need are to be raised up. Jesus makes it clear that a major change is taking place. Okay, a major change is taking place. So that's the purpose of Jesus' illustration here. That's what the Watchtower says. The purpose of this illustration of the rich man and Lazarus is to represent a change that is taking place. So the illustration underscores the magnitude of the change that's coming. It features the two men each of whose status or situation changes dramatically. Hence, it is with the preaching of John and Christ Jesus that both Lazarus and the rich man die to their former circumstances or condition, and they experience new positions relative to God. Those in the rich and influential class of religious leaders refuse to accept the kingdom message that John proclaimed and that Jesus has been preaching throughout the land. Hmm. Okay, so first it says, in one sentence, it says that each of their statuses change dramatically. And then in another sentence, it says 
that the Pharisees refuse to accept the kingdom message that Jesus was preaching about. What did the rich man, or AKA the Pharisees, what was changed? What did they realize? I don't understand. If this is the meaning of the parable, why wasn't the change recognized by the Pharisees? In the scripture, the rich man realizes the truth after his death, and he wants to warn his brothers who are still living. So if the rich man represents the Pharisees, at what point in the Bible do the Pharisees realize they were wrong and wish to warn their spiritual brothers, I guess? Friends? The other Pharisees? I don't know. It says those listening to Jesus know that Abraham is long dead and in the grave. So they're kind of spoon feeding you in their description to accept the fact that there is no hell. So it kind of says, now remember, those listening to Jesus, they know that Abraham is long dead and in the grave. The scriptures make it clear that no one in the grave, a.k.a. Sheol, can see or speak, including Abraham. And then they quote the famous scripture in Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10. Remember what that says? As a former Jehovah's Witness, I remember. I've cited it many times. Those who are living are conscious that they will die. Those who are dead are conscious of nothing at all. But in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, 6 through 9, talks about how we long to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So I personally believe that Ecclesiastes is just talking about the physical body. I believe that we have a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a body, right? And Ecclesiastes is talking about the physical body. The physical body goes in the ground. It's not conscious of anything anymore. Our spirit has left the body. When we die, we no longer have a use for it, which is why I think it's fitting for 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that says to be away from the body is to be at home with the Lord. Our spirit goes up to the Lord. What their chapter doesn't discuss is the meaning of verses 28 through 31 when the rich man wants Abraham to go and warn his five brothers so that they will not also come to this place of torment. So they end the chapter without talking about those last few verses. So if I were to interpret these last verses with the Watchtower's description, okay, it would mean that the Pharisees realized they were wrong and wanted to warn their spiritual brothers or friends. Did that happen in the, in the scriptures anywhere? Why not? Maybe because the explanation is a bunch of bullcorn, okay? The last thing I wanted to point out, we know that Jesus used parables all the time. What do we understand a parable to be? Okay, what, what do we understand a parable to be? Jesus took something that the people knew to compare it to what he was teaching them. He simplified it, he put it in their terms so that they would be able to understand. So if hell isn't real and we don't all go to heaven, why would Jesus choose this illustration to explain a change that's coming? I don't understand. If the parables he used were to help the people understand better Jesus' point, why would he make up something that the people didn't know about? They had to have known about hell and heaven to be able to understand what he was saying, right? So if this is a parable, why would Jesus just make up this 
hell and heaven if there isn't a hell, right? And if we don't go to heaven, why would even why would Jesus even mention in, in his parable that Abraham was in heaven? Why would he talk about Abraham being in heaven if the people knew that Abraham was bit dead and buried and didn't go anywhere? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I'm just saying. So, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Um, or if you have anything to add, let me know. Um, but that's all I've got, you guys. Uh, you guys take care. I hope you all have a great week. God bless. Take care.